Good morning, everybody. We're glad to see everybody here this morning. Uh, you don't think our God isn't big and our God isn't great. I think we're supposed to be getting thunderstorms right about now, aren't we? It's supposed to be raining. But as Brother Bill reminded me this morning, and, and I'm reminded every morning, the sun's still shining. Amen. And ain't no clouds going to keep that sun from shining through this morning. And uh, we're so thankful to have everybody here this morning. Uh, it's special because it's, special it's a time that we set aside to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here's what I, I mean, just all week I've been thinking about this. You know, this world has been trying for thousands of years. To do away with Jesus. But today, our whole nation celebrates Easter. It's on the news. It's the headlines. And they can do whatever they want to. They can say whatever they want to. They'll never get rid of Jesus. Amen. It's not possible. And uh, uh, but, but we're glad. Uh, we're not just here to celebrate for today. This thing, you know. It ain't about just celebrating the resurrection today. We celebrate it every day, every every day of the year. Because every day we're reminded that He rose, that we might also rise. And uh, but we're we're thankful to have everybody. We want to thank the the ladies and the men that came up yesterday and delivered meals and cooked. Uh, I I'm so appreciative. Uh, I know God sees it. And he blesses it, and he's thankful for it. And uh, I was not able to be here yesterday. Uh, I spent some time with my family. I, I needed to spend yesterday, but but I wondered all day how it went, and I knew everything was okay because of the, of the people we've got taking care of it. And, and she wouldn't. I want to thank Miss Brandy. Uh, she's kind of organized this and took it by the horns, and and. Uh, I think I finally got her talked into. She don't have to contact me about everything. She just whatever she thinks is good, I'll go with it. Uh, and uh, but I, I want to thank everybody for that. And and I know these kids, they they thank you. Uh, it puts a smile on their face. And uh, um, I just I'm telling you, I, I'm I'm so grateful and thankful to be the pastor of this church. I'm just a small part. You all are, are the big part of the church, and you do so much more than I could ever do. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And before we get started, we always like to open up in prayer. So I'm going to ask everybody that would, don't just bow your head, but pray with me and pray for us. All right? Father, we just come to you this morning, and we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be here, Lord. Lord, normally we would say we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. But today we're going to say we thank you for the opportunity to be in your midst, Lord. Lord, this morning as I woke up, I had one song on my mind. He is here. Hallelujah, He is here, Lord. And I know that you're here right now, Father. Lord, you're not here, Lord, in the wind. You're not here in the cars, Lord. You're here in each individual, Lord. Your Holy Spirit is beginning to talk and beginning to work and beginning to knock on people's hearts, Lord. And Father, we pray that you would just move on us. Lord, we pray you'd forgive us this morning for how we failed you. We pray you forgive us for the sins that we've committed against you, Lord. Lord, give us a clean slate this morning to be able to worship you and praise you. Give us a clean slate this morning to be able to hear you, Father, and know who you are. Father, Lord, we pray for those that can't be here right now, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would just touch them. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to them, Lord, and allow them to feel your peace and your comfort, Lord, and your strength. Lord, we pray for our country. Lord, we pray for this the, the, the people on the front lines working. Lord, we pray you protect them. Lord, we pray you protect everybody from this virus, Father. Lord, we pray you not let us get it, but if we do get it, Father, you give us the strength to overcome it, Lord. 
And Lord, we pray you be with those that are going to sing here today. Father, we pray that you would just anoint them. Lord, allow them to feel your presence as they open their lips, Father. Father, we pray you be with us, Lord, in the message. Lord, just get us out of the way. Lord, remove all distractions. And Father, we want to once again just thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day. But thank you for the remembrance of your Son and what he did, Lord. And for his resurrection. And Lord, the hope that we cling to now, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We love you in your precious and holy name you pray. Amen. All right, I've got a treat for you this morning. My plan worked. I've done such a bad job singing last week, I ain't got to sing this week. So uh, we're going to sing some songs, Miss Mickey and, and her girls. Uh, Mickey's going to get a mic. Grace's going to get a mic. Joanne's going to get a mic. We figured Jennifer didn't need a mic. Y'all be able to hear her, so... No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you, but follow along with them and sing. Okay, everybody, we all know uh, Jesus is alive and well. So that's what we're going to sing, and you all sing with us, okay? And so, and just pray for us as we sing, but we need you to sing with us. I am very thankful for this Easter. This time last year, I had a very sick husband, and I thank God for taking care of him, and he's with us today. Uh, okay. Come over. Okay, come over this way. It is easy. Okay. Father, in a city. 
we're going to help them. I've got the word. <laughs> we sure didn't miss Missy on the screen. <laughs>
y'all pray for me. This is a hard song to sing, and I'm not Dolly Parton, so y'all pray for me.
think I got this on. Thank you, girls, for that song. I remember being a a little boy in church, and we'd put on the Easter play, and we'd have that scene right there, and Mickey'd sing that song, and it was just a play, you know, so it was not real actors, but we did pretty good, I thought, but uh, that scene, I remember in the old church, it was Jesus would be standing in that baptistry and there was white everywhere. And that song, she would start singing that song and we would see that he's alive. And as a little boy, it touched me. I remember it like yesterday. And oh, what a grander joy it's going to be when I get there and I lay hold on him with my physical eyes. I know in my heart that he's alive. I can feel him and I, 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 can, I experience him all the time. But there's going to come a day when I'm going to get next to him and I'm going to be able to touch him. And I'm going to be able to behold the beauty of his eyes and the love that comes out of him. I'm going to feel everything that I've longed to feel. And I, I know this world has tried, this world has tried for so long, for 2,000 years they've said he's not alive. But the story keeps going out, doesn't it? People still, still keep, people keep getting saved. Miracles are still being done. Wonders are still happening. And all because why? Because He is alive. He's not dead. Amen. He's done the one thing that no man could ever do. And men have tried. Uh, scientists nowadays, uh, they've tried to freeze people. They've tried to give people certain uh, medicines that would cause them to live longer. But a man's got an appointed time out there and there's no going past it. But Jesus, and, and they, they can't come back. I've, 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 I've had the opportunity to preach a lot of funerals. And there's been a lot of times I went into the funeral home and I have wanted to say, get up out of that casket. I have wanted to speak to them to raise up. But I've not been given that opportunity. And I've not had that ability. But I'm glad to know that they wasn't nobody had to speak to Jesus and tell Him to come up. He come up of His own will and of His own core and come out His own way. Why? Because He loves you and I. That's right. He loves us. He loves you. You say, Jeremy, I don't believe in this Jesus stuff. It's alright. Don't worry about it. He says, Jerry, listen. It ain't the cross. It's the man on the cross. Don't worry that the cross fell. The cross that he hung on ain't standing today. But Jesus is still standing today. He's still alive and well. But let's, uh, let's get to our, our scripture. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 11. John, is it when I get close to them, they buzz? Okay, I just checked it. See how much movement I can get. Yeah, you all are spoiled. You all are. I got the lapel working this morning. I ain't bound by this, these mics anymore. I can move around. You may find me on... I would get on top of Donnie's car, but it's a Toyota. It may cave in. I better not. <laughs> if you got your Bibles, Exodus chapter 11. We all know this scripture, but that's, this is worth... And uh, those of you that, that maybe don't go to Mill Creek all the time, the people here could tell you I'm not one of those... I don't prepare a sermon because of the occasion. Mother's Day, I don't know when the last time I preached on a mother on Mother's Day. Father's Day, I don't know when I preached on, you know, last Easter I didn't preach on the resurrection or the, or the Passover. But this is where the Lord has pointed me this morning. And we're going to read the first seven verses. We'll pray and then we'll see where the Lord have us go. Pray for us though. And the Lord said unto Moses... Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh. And I want you to understand, death is a plague. Death is a plague. I'm going to bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt afterwards. He will let you go hence when he shall let you go. Listen here. He shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. 
Speak now in the ears of the people. Let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And I want to stop right there and I want you to understand that. The Lord wants us to be in the world but not of the world. He understands we have to use this world to survive. He understands we have to go to the grocery store. We have to have jobs. Just like here. And He gives us favor for those things. We think we get jobs because so and so spoke something. So and some politician talked for us. No. You get a job because God says, I want you in that job. And you lose a job because God says, I want you out of that job. But He gives us favor in the eyes of this world that we may be able to make a living. But understand, He wants us to, he wants us to be in the world but not of the world. And we'll see that as we go on. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord about midnight, Will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in, in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But listen to this in verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and, the, and, and Israel. Pray with me and pray for me. Father, we just thank you this morning for everything that we've already felt. Lord, everything we've already experienced. And Lord, we, 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 we've had a good time so far, Father. But Lord, we're not satisfied. We want more of you, Father. We want you to pour out so much on us, Lord, that we couldn't stand it. We couldn't control it. We couldn't hold it, Father. Father, I pray most of all, Lord, if there be one that can hear, not my voice, but hear you, Father. You can hear you, Father. I pray that they would, would, would give in, Lord. I pray that they would open their heart. Lord, they'd open the door and let you come in. And Father, we pray for us this morning that need to get closer to You, Father. Us this morning that we've grown a little far apart since the last time we've met, Father. Lord, we've grown far apart in the last month, the last year, Father. We've not been living like we need to be living. Lord, we tell people we're a Christian, Father, but our actions don't really show it. Lord, we pray that You'd show us this morning, Lord, what we need to do. Remind us of who You are. Remind us of what You've done. Lord, and remind Find us who we need to be, Father. And Father, I pray that you be with me. I pray that you control my thoughts. I pray that you tame my tongue. And I pray you remove me from here as far as you can, Father. And Lord, we just thank you. We love you. And in your precious and holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Do you all remember how the children of Israel got into Egypt? It was under the direction of God. Remember Joseph? The son of Jacob, the story of the coat of many colors, and he was sold by his brethren, and he was betrayed by Potiphar's wife, and he was cast into prison, and he revealed a dream to the king, to the Pharaoh, and Pharaoh made him the second most powerful man in Egypt. The only one more powerful than Joseph was Pharaoh. And Joseph brought the children of Israel into the Egypt to sustain their life. God wants us to sustain life. God wants us to have a good life. God don't want His righteous begging for bread. God don't want us having a hard time. He wants to, 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 to bless us. He wants to give us favor in the eyes of man if we'll let Him. But they came into Egypt. But as, the, as they stayed in Egypt, Pharaoh began to see that the children of Israel had more power than he had. The children of Israel became greater than he was. And why? Because their God was greater than he was. So he began to persecute the children of Israel. He began to go against them. He began to make them labor and work harder. It sounds a lot like what Satan's trying to do in the world today. Satan realizes that the children of God are more powerful than him. He realizes that we're starting to grow. He realizes, hey, I believe he's shaking in these times because he's understood this virus has come out. But guess what? The Christians have not stopped being Christians. The children of God are still being children of God. Hey, they, 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 we have shown him we don't have to be in a building to worship our God. We don't have to be in the, uh, standing two feet from each other. We can worship and praise our God no matter where we are, whether it be in our cars or whether it be in our homes or whether it be behind a TV screen or a computer screen. We can still serve God. And He's worried. Amen. He's 
worried. But let's get to the scripture. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet I will bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. And I want you to hear what it says. Afterwards, what will he do? He will let you go. I want you to understand God brought one more thing. Men had tried for years to get to heaven, hadn't they? And men had tried for years to break the hold of sin and the hold that Satan had on them. But it never would work, would it? But God said, I've got one more thing coming. And when this happens, Satan will let you go. When this happens, Satan will thrust you out. And I want you to understand that right now. There's people sitting here right now. You don't know it. You don't realize it. But Satan has a hold on you. You can't feel it because why? He's got manipulative ways of getting us. He's got different schemes to control us. But he's got a hold on you. But if you get into this one thing that God has, and we'll talk about it here in a minute, I promise you, Satan will let go of you. He will thrust you out. Why? Because he will realize you're no longer his. You realize you turned your back on him and went somewhere else. Now I'm not saying he'll leave you alone. I promise you he'll still aggravate you. But he'll have no hold on you. He'll have no victory over you. You'll not be in captivity and bondage anymore like the children of Israel were with Pharaoh. We look down at verse 4. And Moses said, And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out in the midst of Egypt. You know, this coronavirus come out of nowhere, didn't it? Huh? As they were singing, I sat here and thought, We put off building this lean to for two years. But we got it done in time, didn't we? We didn't know that this lean-to would be where we would stand and preach from and sing from, did we? We had no idea. But God did, didn't He? God let everything fall together. See, we don't realize that He works so far ahead of us. But in the midnight hour, He says, I'll come. We didn't know the coronavirus was coming. And we don't know when death's going to come, do we? And we have no idea when He's going to split those eastern skies and come back, do we? In, 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 in Matthew, verse 25, He says, Therefore be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not, what? The Son of Man cometh. And I'm not going to add to the Bible, but I believe that He could say this, For such an hour as you think not, you're going to meet the Son of Man. It may not be He comes back. It may be you go to Him. You say, preacher, I ain't going to stand before Jesus. Every knee will bow before Jesus. I don't care if you believe in Him or not. One day, you will meet Him. And you'll give an account. And He's going to be looking for something that day. He's not going to be looking at the deeds you've done. He's not going to be looking, does your good outweigh your bad? He's not going to be looking, did you go to church? He's not going to be looking, was you a member of Mill Creek? He's not going to be looking, did you tithe every Sunday? He's not going to be looking if you drove a bus. He's not going to be looking if you sung a song. He's not going to be looking if you stand behind the pulpit. What you going to do? We look over in Matthew, or I mean not Matthew, but uh, Exodus chapter 12 and, and at verse 13. And here I, I'm done moving on. We'll have to get back to the other part. And it said, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And here's what he says in Exodus. I want you to understand. God knew in Exodus that He was going to send His Son to die on Calvary. He knew in Exodus that He was going to shed His innocent blood. Why? Because He loved us. He knew there was no other way that you could and I could satisfy what He had set before us. But He knew that His Son could do it. And He said what? Behold, when I see the blood, He said what? I'll pass over you. When He sees the blood, 
God's not looking for anything else today but the blood of Jesus on your life. That's all He's looking for. But let's go back. In verse 5 of chapter 11, And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even to the firstborn of the maidservants that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. And when I read that, I thought about, oh, the parents that are going to stand before Jesus and cry. Because they're going to say what? I didn't believe in Jesus. I thought it was fake. I thought you wasn't real. Lord, what about my children? What about my son? What about my daughter? Lord, I didn't tell them about you. You realize Pharaoh, all these firstborns was upon Pharaoh. It was Pharaoh's fault that they died. Now I truly believe that if there was any Egyptians that had listened to God and put the blood over the doorpost, their firstborn did not die. But I want you to understand, they were not an Egyptian anymore. They may have been an Egyptian by where they was born at, but they were an Israelite because what was born inside of them. I'm a Sanders because my daddy was a Sanders. But I'm a child of God because my father is Jehovah. I'm a child of God because I'm in a different family now. A better family. But I worry how many parents tell their kids that this stuff ain't real. And you say, preacher, I have never went out. I have never told my son or my daughter that Jesus isn't real. No, but you're showing him with your actions. Aren't you? Right? Basketball is more important, isn't it? Football is more important, isn't it? Baseball is more important. Fishing is more important. Hunting is more important. Riding you side by side is more important. Let's get down to the daily activities. Going to work is more important than serving Jesus, isn't it? The television is more important than Jesus. Facebook is more important than Jesus. You may not be telling your kids that Jesus isn't alive, but you are showing them. And what are, we, what are you going to have to pay? What we, what's it going to take? What you don't realize, mom and dad, granddad and grandma, what's going to happen? One day you're going to stand before God and the blood of your children is going to be on your hands. Like the blood of these children, Pharaoh's firstborn son, the blood of his son was on his hands. Nobody else's. God had tried and tried. God had shown him nine wonders and miracles of the, of the land. And still Pharaoh wouldn't believe. God has shown every one of us here so many miracles and so many wonders. But still yet what? We don't want to believe. Why? It's contrary to our life. It's contrary to our lifestyle, isn't it? But look at this verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel. Now I want you to understand this too. The children of Israel that did not paint the blood over the door. Their firstborn died. Not all that say they are Israel are Israel. You realize that. A man is not a Jew on the outward. He's a Jew inward. It's not, the, it's not the circumcision of the flesh. It's the circumcision of the heart. I am a Jew. You say, preacher, you don't look like a Jew. You don't have the head of a Jew. Preacher, your head is way too big to be a Jew. I agree. But I'm not a Jew Outwardly, I'm a Jew inwardly. 
What is a Jew? I'm a child of Jesus. That's what it means. I'm a child of God. I'm a servant of His. But against the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against a man or a beast, that you may know how that the Lord put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. I want you to know that it wasn't not just the Lord put a difference, but the people put a difference. The Lord gives us a choice. Choose Him or choose not Him. He does not force it upon us. It's a free will. But if you don't choose Him, He's not going to choose you. My two kids in their car back there, I'd do anything for them. Foolish things. Do whatever they ask. If one of them needed my, if my little girl needed my kidney, there'd be no hesitation, I'd give it to her. If my boy needed my heart, I'd cut my chest open myself and hand it to him. But Derek, I love Austin and Connor a lot, but I don't know if I'd do that for them like I could my own son and my own daughter. God takes care of His children what he does he can't help it that we rebel on him it's not his fault we left the house is it it's not his fault we turned our backs it's not his fault we get out of his will or his way but the good thing about him is if we'll just come back he'll have us but let's go on we read I want to read verse 5. I want to show you, or chapter 12, verse 5. I want to show you who Jesus was. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He was Mary's only son. He was without sin, perfect in every aspect. He was not perfect in his looks. Isaiah said, There was no comeliness. About him that any would desire him. In other words, what are you saying? He wasn't even the best looking man. See, Tanner, you don't have to look that good. Jesus didn't. <laughs> Nobody desired him. But he was without blemish. He never hurt anybody's feelings. He never said anything negative. He never lied. He always spoke the truth. He cared for others. He said, I came, not to, I came not to be ministered to, but to minister. That wasn't saying he, can, he didn't come not to preach, but to preach. He said, I come to serve, not to be served. He came to serve us. Loved us in every aspect. But he was without blemish. Male the first year. And you should take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Out of the sheep or from the goats. He was from a, just a normal family. Mary. Out of the tribe of Judah. And the whole. And I want you to look at verse 6. And the whole congregation of Israel. Shall kill it. I want you to understand. That we didn't actually. Physically killed Jesus. Jesus laid down his life himself. He gave Jesus gave up the ghost. The Roman soldiers didn't kill him. It was not the cat of nine, nine tails that killed him. But the reason he was on the cross, the reason he was beaten, was because what? Because of us. Because of our sins. And that's what I've seen here. All of Israel shall kill it. I want you to stand. All of the world, every man, every boy, boy, every woman, every girl that was ever been born, whether they be in China or Korea or Africa or Australia or South America or in the United States, we are the reason that Jesus died. We are the reason. What reason? Our sins was laid upon Him. And He suffered the thing that we all regret to see. And that was the judgment of death for us. Why? Because He loves us. 
I want you to understand that. There's people here today that may not be able to stand me and you may have a good reason and probably right about it. And no, I'm not talking about my wife. I know y'all was thinking that. But I want you to think about how bad we are. You know what brings me to tears more than anything? Is when I look at my life and I see all the bad that I've done. And then I see how much Jesus still loves me. Then I see how much He still cares for me. But let's go on. Verse 7, They shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And Jesus said when, in verse 13 and also in verse 23 of chapter 12, He said, When I see the blood, I'll pass over. When I see the blood, you won't have to face that last plague. When I see the blood, you'll not have any death. Preacher, does this coronavirus scare you? Just a little bit. It scares me a little bit because I hate seeing families suffer. I hate seeing people go through things. Pastor, how can God allow this virus to take so many people's lives? If they are of Israel, if they are His children, this virus can't touch their lives. This virus can touch their bodies, but their souls will live forever. Preacher, are you worried about getting the coronavirus? No, I'm not. Why, preacher? Because you're young and you're healthy? No. I'm not worried. Why? There's nothing this world can do to me. This virus can take my breathing. This virus can stop my old physical heart. But it can't take what's inside of me. Preacher, you're going to die someday. No, that's wrong. I died years ago. December 22nd, 2004, this old boy laid down his life and he got a new one. This next death is not going to be a death for me, but a passing on to a better place. God's not killing His people. He's bringing them home. God's not taking anybody's life. He's giving it to them fully now. All these Christians that's, that's died from the coronavirus or from cancer or from anything else, they've not died. They've now understood eternal life. Because I truly believe that when I take my last breath down here, I'll take my first breath over there. I don't believe Jesus died and rose again a third day so I could go to some holding place. I believe when He rose again that third day, everybody in the Old Testament rose with Him and made their way to heaven. And when I die on here, that's where I'll be going. And Moses ain't going to be standing there to greet me. Peter won't be standing at the gate. My family members that went on before me ain't going to be standing at the gate. There's going to be one man at the gate. going to be Jesus. Saying what? Welcome home, my child. Welcome home. But I want you to look at Revelations chapter 7, verse 14. Preacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? What do I have to do to get this you're talking about? What do I have to do, preacher, to escape death, to escape this plague, to escape the whole of Satan. Verse 14 in Revelation chapter 17, or chapter 7, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. I want, I want to go back to 13. For one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, They are they which came out of the great tribulations, and have washed their robes. And made them white in what? 
the blood of the Lamb. That's the only thing that they're showing when they get there. Do you understand that? That's the only thing that's going to be seen is the blood of Jesus. Because why? That's all He's looking for. That's all God's looking for. We'll look at one more place. Revelation chapter 12. Starting at verse 10. We're almost finished. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And listen to this. Who's that talking about? It's talking about Satan. Satan's been cast down. He ain't got no more power. The power that he has is the power that we give him through our weakness and through our silliness and through our foolishness. But he has no power. But who are they? And they did what? They overcame him. They overcame who? They overcame Satan. They overcame death. By what? By the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye in heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And I want you to understand, that is more true today than it has ever been. The devil has come, and he's tried his best to overcome us. He's tried his best to win us. But be of good cheer. What a God, Jesus, has already overcome him. And so can you. How, preacher? By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Jeremy, how do you know you're going to heaven? Because the blood of Jesus runs through my soul. The blood of Jesus cleansed me of all my filthiness and of all my sins. I washed my robe white in the blood of the Lamb. And when I get there and I stand before Jesus on my judgment day, and God there with Him, He's going to be looking for one thing. He's going to be looking for the blood. And when He sees the blood, He'll say what? Come on in. Come on in. You're finally home. Let's get us a song. As the song begins to play, if you need to pray, would you pray? You say, Jeremy, this is unconvinced. Ah, this is kind of weird. Ain't nothing weird about it. God's here. Jeremy, what do I pray? You pray whatever you need to pray. It ain't about what comes out of your mouth. It's about what comes out of your heart. Say, so Jeremy, I feel like I need to get out of the vehicle. Get out. Get on your knees. Do whatever you need to do today. What could not see they were mourning their loss as the sky turned black and the earth turned away at the foot of the cross. They were so close. We take it at our kids. What are we showing our kids? I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand there one day and say, Jesus, it's not love. They're my son. Is it hell?
want to thank everybody for being here today. And uh, if you feel like God has saved you today, please let me know. Please. The Bible says, He who is ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of him. He who denies me, I'll deny him. Don't deny him. Don't be ashamed of what God has done for you today. I promise you. Listen, we love you. We hope you have a great Easter. We understand more than anything. Jesus loves you. And he gave his life for you, knowing who exactly who you are, that you might be able to do what he did. Come up out of that grave. And I'm not talking about a grave in the ground. I'm talking about come up out of this old man. Spiritually. We thank you. And uh, Lord willing, we hope to see you next Sunday. Don't forget Wednesday nights. We're continuing our Bible study through the life of David on YouTube. We'll also uh, get this video loaded to YouTube when we get home and put it on there. So if you know somebody that couldn't make it today, you can tell them they can go on there. It's a Mill Creek Baptist Church, Stony Fork. Just type that in on YouTube and it should come up. But be careful pulling out. Be patient. Let's try not to have any accidents today, okay? So we love you and we'll see you next week.